So a couple weeks ago, I showed you how to use printed acetate sheets in your art journal. And when I was looking online, I realized there's not a lot of companies that actually carry these printed acetate sheets. But acetate is a very easy medium to color and alter for your art journal. So today I want to share with you how you can use Just Clear Acetate with a variety of paints and inks to make your own beautiful patterned acetate sheets. So let's get started. So let's first talk about our materials for today's project. I'll be using acetate, which you can see is clear. This one's fairly flexible and light, and I'll be providing the materials in the description below, including this exact acetate that I got from Amazon. And so this one's a good one for me just because it will bend, so it makes it nice to use for cards, for art journal pages. It's not gonna fight me nearly as much. I'm also gonna be using regular plastic uh, that I got just from packaging that I often will take large sections of packaging that are clear and use them. These ones are a little bit more beat up. They just tend to get beat up just in the process of being used for packaging. If you want to use acetate sheets, they're a little bit clearer and nicer. And really the difference between a lot of these things, acetate, mylar, um, even regular plastic is what they're made out of. So acetate is made from a nylon based material, also known as cellulose. While mylar, which is a brand name, is basically made out of polyester. And that polyester it also comes in clear sheets like this, and they come in a lot of different thicknesses. And then we have just the regular plastic. A lot of the stuff I don't know where I got it from, just because it was just packaging that I basically cut up to use in this project. I find that a lot of these materials work the same for these techniques. So don't get too fussed if you're using mylar over acetate or plastic over acetate. I don't find that it really matters that much. I just want you to be aware of the properties of these materials. So even though I have some large 12 by 12 sheets today for these samples, I'm just gonna be using little four by six sheets that I have and just a variety of other plastic that I have. And the plastic that I'm using is quite a bit thicker than the acetate that I'm using today. So if you wanna add images to this, what can you use? Uh, we're gonna be focusing mostly on stamping in today's video because I find that's a really fast way of adding imagery and texture onto these acetate sheets. I wanted to show you how to use archival ink, stays on ink, and then also some acrylic paint. And then when we're coloring, I'll show you how each of these work with coloring and how they react with the different coloring mediums. So for today's demonstration, I'm gonna be using a picket fence stamp that I have. So I'm gonna be using Golden Fluid Acrylics Bone Black paint today, just because of the fact that it's a fluid paint, so it's gonna go on quite nicely onto our surface and it's going to give us a little bit more of an even feel because I find if you don't use a more fluid paint, what you end up with is a lot more clumps and a, a not a good coverage of your image. So I'm gonna start by just adding in a thin layer of paint and I'm gonna be probably adding two thin layers of paint as I go with this. So I'm gonna make sure I end up with even coverage and that this looks really good and it, it's going to give us a good image because again, this isn't going to absorb into the acetate. Instead, it's gonna sit on top. So we just need to make sure that we end up having enough color or paint on our surface to make sure that we do get a good image. I'm gonna actually just lay it down nicely onto the surface. I slipped there, so we'll see if it actually ends up turning out. I just press it gently. I have a picket fence a stamp tool here that just helps me get a nice even coat. And we'll see, I just slid. So we'll see if we have a sliding image or if it's a nice clear image. And that worked out too bad. So you can see the areas I had more paint on the surface. You can see the areas I had less paint on. And so I wanted to show this to you just because paint is a hard one to do, especially for detailed images. What I like to use paint for is a lot more blocky images and I'll show that to you in a little bit. And you need to make sure you wash your stamp right away just so that you don't damage it by letting the paint dry on it. So where I tend to use paint when I'm using with acetate is you're looking for block images like this, like little images that I wanna add in a little bit of design and color to my page. This is where I would come in with something small like this that has a nice strong image and I will use the brayer just to add a little bit of paint to it. And I'm just gonna be grabbing a piece of plastic this time around. And this is where you can add in, even like not just the first stamping, but the second or third stamping of a painted image, right? And so this is where I like using them is more for adding in color and general design to a page than trying to get the details. I feel like the ink does a much better job of creating detail 
But I did want to show you different ways you could use acrylics just so that you're aware. If you want some good color and you want something that's going to be really vibrant, uh, really paint is a really good choice for adding imagery to any sort of acetate. So you can see that once that dries, it's going to be really nice. It's going to be a nice layer that you can add in on another piece of paper. And you're going to see that little bit of shine. You're going to see that really interesting pattern. Um, again, this is the one that I did with the paint. Again, you can see it works, it dries quickly. What I love about the paint is it dries really, really quickly. It's the fastest drying of the mediums, but you don't always get all the detail in here. And this is one that I did stamp a little bit better. And this is done with a rose stamp. But with this one, you can see some of these areas, I had a lot more darker paint here. I had not as much there. It doesn't go on as evenly. So by adding in a little bit too much paint, you're not going to get as a consistent result. So that's something to be aware of. It isn't that it's a bad medium. It's just you need to know what you want to use it for and what kind of results you're going to get. But we're now going to move on to our two inks. The inks I find the best for getting those detailed images. So when we're looking to stamp on acetate, and really this works exactly the same on plastic, be aware that whether or not you're using acetate, mylar, plastic, a lot of this is going to work the same because we're really relying on the properties of the inks themselves for this step. So in this case, I'm adding archival ink. I'm adding quite a bit of ink to the surface more just because my stamp pad is on the dry side and I'm going to try to get a really good image with this. And what's nice about ink is it doesn't tend to move as much when you add pressure and you push down on it, where sometimes with paint, because of the tension between the paint that's on the surface between the stamp and the surface, sometimes it will slide a little bit. And so I'm just gonna give that a really good rub. I'm gonna lift this up and we'll see how good I got a detailed image. So you can see with this one, I ended up with a little bit light of lightness in the center of these images. I feel like that has something to do with the way the stamp is and trying to get a lot of that detail in can be sometimes challenging. This is where using a stamping platform could be helpful but I feel like with acetate, sometimes it moves, so you'd have to make sure it's down really well in a stamping platform before trying this, just to make sure that it doesn't slip and you don't end up with worse results than better results. So I have cleaned my stamp, even though it looks pretty dark, we're gonna come in with some stays on ink. And what the difference is really between the archival ink and the stays on ink is the archival ink is an oil-based ink, the stays on ink is a solvent-based ink. And what's nice about a solvent-based ink is it's meant to work on non-pore surfaces. So acetate is really the perfect surface for stays on ink. Between the paint, the archival ink, and the stays on ink, I like the stays on ink the best. I find that dries really quickly. It gives you a really great result. And this is the type of surface it's meant to work on. So because the stays on likes to work on any surface and I'd like to try to keep my area as clean as possible, I am just going to add it on to a scrap piece of paper. That way I'm kind of protecting my background. And I'm pressing really, really hard because I really want to try to get those centers of those flowers to really stick. I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference, but you know, we'll give it a try and see. So there we can see. So now that I've pulled it off, I feel like this one got the centers a little bit better. I generally like the overall look of it. Again, the archival isn't bad, but I feel like I get a little bit better results with the stays on. Again, a little bit of this corner here, I didn't get the corner quite as well, which is why I'm not getting as strong of a stamping pattern. But you can see the results fairly similar. It's just, again, depending on what you have on hand. I wouldn't necessarily go and buy a stays on ink pad just for one new technique, but I like having the stays on ink pads for using on lots of surfaces like this, and that's something that I like to do. But really, you could use any archival ink pad to get the same result. I also want to talk about how to deal with lettering because when you add lettering, when you put your stamp on, it is meant to go on the front of the acetate. So this is one where you're not going to be flipping it over backwards for that smoothness. You're going to leave it the way it is. But I've used both the archival, the stays on, and the paint. And you can see the paint, I did, it took me about three times to get the right impression. And some of this was also double stamping. So this one was actually the second stamp. And what you'll notice is that on this one with the ink, all of the letters look very clean and crisp and they really follow the nature of the stamp. But with this one here, 
So you can see that just with the pressure of the paint and the paint's basically getting squished onto the page, is spreading out. And so what you have is actually these little areas in between, they're almost making it look more like an outline. So depending on the look you're looking for, the paint can work really well for you for getting a certain look. But what I would suggest is that if you're using paint, do it on a piece that you're not precious about, stamp it several times, um, add some paint, add it once, stamp it twice, and then see what the results are because you might find that depending on the result you might be happier with how it looks. So if you were following along a couple of weeks ago I showed you how to do this project where I stamped on colored acetate. I also used acetate that had been pre-printed which also works really really well and so with this one you'll notice that it looks like everything is clear. I did use the art glitter glue it went on cloudy, but then once it dried, it was completely clear. So this is a way you can use a lot of different layers and use your acetate on an art journal project. And in my spare time, I've been also creating an anniversary book for all my anniversaries that my husband and I have spent together. And you can see that not only can you use larger pieces to put them behind, you can also cut out your images once you've stamped them. And then once those stamped images, they can go on as ephemera. So what's kind of neat about this is that I loved this beautiful foiled background that I did. I didn't want to cover it up. So by adding an acetate, it helps it feel like there's layers there, but instead of it being really heavy layers covering up things, all of that really beautiful colors peeking through and you still have your acetate images. And again, all of these were added with the art glitter glue, which means it works on a lot of surfaces that you would find maybe hard for them to attach to like foil because you're using a glue that dries clear. It will dry completely. It will dry permanently and it works really, really well. So I really wanted to show you some practical ways you could use the acetate in your projects, whether or not you're doing an art journal, a scrapbooking page, um, a card, this works really, really well on a lot of different mediums. So I hope this has given you some great ideas on how to use acetate in your projects. I love that we can create little ephemera pieces, but I also like larger pieces like this that we can turn into cards or use them in our art journal pages or part of our collage projects. And I'd love to hear your questions or your comments about this technique. Do you use acetate a lot in your creative practice? If you do and you have some tips, tricks, techniques that you'd like to share, I'd love to see your comments below. And if you're looking for the same acetate that I used in today's project, I've included it in the description below along with all the other supplies. There are some affiliate links in that supply list and that just means that anytime you purchase, I get a small commission, but at no additional cost to you. So that's just a really practical way you can support this channel. So just thank you so much for your support. And stay tuned for next week where I'm going to be sharing with you about how to color on acetate. But in the meantime, if you'd like to see the video that I use collage and tissue paper together in an art journal, click here. So I'll see you in the next video.